Hey everyone, how's it going? So, finally back at work. Um, the video that you're about to see, I actually made this, I think, uh, two days after Christmas. This whole thing with me started around Christmas, and I thought I was getting better. Obviously, I wasn't getting better. I actually came into work for about two hours. I made this following video, uh, and then after I was at the shop for about two hours, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I went home, and then I was out for an entire week and a half after that. <clears throat> so, back in it today at the shop, and I walk into, I got to do a Toyota motor. Um, I'm going to make a short little video on that, but uh, yeah, so here's this video. So, in the beginning where I say it's just after Christmas, well, yeah, it was, um, and then two hours after that, I was out of it. So, anyway, enjoy the video. Hey everyone, how's it going? So it's after Christmas. Just getting over the flu myself. Yeah. Anyway, got the issues with the wife. I get the flu. Yeah, it's been been fantastic. Anyway, so I'm back at the shop, and uh, I have this 2008 Ford Edge with a uh, 3.5 liter. Customer's complaint is that uh, it has a misfire on cylinder five. Kind of strange for a customer to come in and say I have a cylinder misfire on you know specific cylinder. So they're telling me cylinder five. Okay, how do you know it's cylinder five? Well, I replaced the coil and it fixed it for a little while. Okay, how do you know the coil was bad? They show me this. So as soon as I see this, I'm like, hmm. Little bells start going off up here. I start remembering some things. Let me show you this a little better. So see that? Still melted, cracked, burned up. Yeah, so they leave it with me. And um, I pull it inside. Sure enough, I check cylinder number five misfire. All right, I figured let me swap the coils just in case. Could have gotten a bad coil. Anything's possible. But as soon as I saw those cracks, I was like starting to ring the bell. So I pulled out cylinder four. Cylinder four, the original coil, looks mint. I go to pull out cylinder five, the coil's not coming out. I wound up having to pry it out. This thing is hot as all get out, too. See that? All melted. You can see where it started to burn and everything else down there. There's cylinder five. Now I pulled the spark plugs out. He changed the spark plugs. I don't know if he changed the ones on the rear. These are not the originals. I mean, they are motorcraft, but they're not the original plugs. I'm going to say I doubt very highly change the ones in the back, only because you got to take the intake plenum off, but anything's possible. I'm going to find out. What causes this? Like I said, I've run into this in the past. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a number of years. What actually causes this is, I hate to say it this way, because this thing's only got 130,000 miles on it. What causes this is actually lack of maintenance. So you only got 130, 137, something in that range. But I believe they tell you to change the spark plugs at 100,000. And I'm a firm believer in changing the spark plugs at about 75,000. I don't care if they're platinum, iridium, titanium. Who knows? I, I don't care. 75,000 miles is about the max you want to go on a spark plug. Why? Because what happens is it builds up resistance through the coil. That resistance winds up going up to the PCM. The PCM now has to work harder to actually trigger the coil to fire the spark plug. I saw this on a, another Ford Edge, I'm pretty sure it was. I've seen it on a Ford Escape, but Fords are way more particular for this issue than any others I've ever seen. Um, I have seen some foreign cars do it. Some, I've seen some Hondas and some Toyotas do it too, where people you know, go 200,000 miles on a set of spark plugs, and then they wind up frying a driver in a PCM. So, I did not test this thing out yet, but just grabbing this by hand, this is the one that came out of cylinder four, and I pulled these out 10 minutes ago. This is cool. This one is hot. I mean, it's actually hot to the touch where, like, I don't want to hold it. It's too hot. It's overheating. Usually what happens is there's a buildup of resistance through the computer that creates this issue. This is already... What is this Thursday today? And um, we're only going to be open for half a day tomorrow, and I still have a clutch that I'm working on on a Subaru. So 
I think what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to postpone this thing till next week if he wants to get into this. But I got a funny feeling the PCM is no good and I'm gonna be able to ohm out the wiring and find that the wiring itself is all good and the only last piece of the puzzle is gonna be the PCM. I'm pretty confident that's what it's gonna be because like I said, I've been down this road before. So, all right, I just thought it was kind of interesting because it's not normal to see this. So, but uh, yeah, all right. Well, hopefully we'll get further into this. So this is just gonna be a quick short video. All right, guys, hopefully you're getting something out of my videos. If you are, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, have a great day. Keep wrenching.